Video games have been part of our culture for decades, and sports games have been front and center since Pong was created in 1972. While every sport has been captured by the virtual world, hockey hasn't translated as well as, say, football, basketball, soccer, or baseball. But at least they got NASCAR beat. While hockey hasn't seen the wide success of the other sports, it certainly had some gems that gained a place in fans' hearts through the years. I'm Mark for Big Apple Hockey, and these are the best hockey video games of all time. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining, interactive podcast. So, check us out and our library of videos. Showcasing the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 graphics, NHL Stanley Cup displays an innovative system to constantly show you the action behind the puck. That was part of the problem. Hockey moved so quickly that you couldn't tell what happened and caused NHL Stanley Cup to have mixed results in its gameplay. It was still an ambitious project, even though it could leave you a little dizzy. In the 90s, there was an arcade game called Arch Rivals, where cartoon basketball players were able to do pretty much anything they want on the court. As the game said, no harm, no foul. And then hockey fans thought, we need a game like this. And it wouldn't be the first time I'm going to say this for this list. Hit the Ice came out in the arcade and later on the Genesis and Super Nintendo, where made-up players played a no-holds-barred game of hockey with super shots and plenty of fighting. The game was fun, but it boiled hockey down to fighting and scoring. And there's more to hockey than that, right? Mutant League Football was an inventive game in the mid-90s where mutants and robots would battle on the football field. Then they spun off Mutant League Hockey with star players like Bones Jackson and Mario LePuke as their bones decorated the ice in this chaotic, violent, entertaining game. Featuring a rink with fire pits, sharks, and holes to fall in as the crowd would throw weapons on the ice for the players to brutally kill each other. You could win the game like an actual hockey game, including a two-goal shot when released beyond the blue line, or you could kill enough players to cause a forfeit. The characters and the atmosphere were colorful, even though it wasn't as well-received as Mutant League football. Nintendo Ice Hockey brought the fastest game on Earth to the NES in the mid-80s with a nationalistic approach. You can play as USA, Russia, Poland, Sweden, Czechoslovakia, or Canada with customizable lineups, but the fun didn't stop there. Whether you played with big players, skinny players, or average players, NES Ice Hockey was a great time as you enjoyed a cartoonish Olympics. When Sony entered the video game field, they presented the NHL Face-Off series as a reasonable competitor to the EA NHL series. The presentation was good for its time, with Mike Emmerich and Darren Pang announcing. It brought over the icon passing from their basketball series, which made power plays feel real. To this day, still don't have a hockey game that can replicate a power play with realism. Plus, my cousin Phil worked on the sound for this game. However, it couldn't beat the NHL Juggernaut series as that transitioned to the PlayStation as well. Speaking of franchises that battled EA, Sega launched its 2K series for the Dreamcast, and NHL 2K was part of the exclusive sports lineup. Throughout its life, the 2K series was well received by critics, often gaining 8 out of 10s, and would be renamed ESPN Hockey Night for the 2004 version. It would keep the ESPN label for one more year, before returning to the NHL 2K moniker. The game's presentation was comparable to the EA NHL series, with a custom TV presentation for each game and detail like the Winter Classic Arenas. I mean, why not reuse the assets from the 2K Baseball series? But the NHL 2K series came to an end with 2K11 on the Nintendo Wii. Blades of Steel began its life in the arcade, but its legacy was on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Players could choose from eight different teams with different characteristics, and for its time, the simulation was a quality experience on the 8-bit Nintendo. From its fight engine to the shootouts, Blades of Steel was one of the best hockey games of all time. For that 10-year-old that got the game, got his money's worth. In the 90s, I used to go to Call the Pizza every day to play NBA Jam and shelled out enough quarters into the game to beat every team. At the end, I wished for an NHL version of this. Then at Iceland Rink in New Hyde Park, I played NHL Open Ice for the first time. And a few months later, 
I beat all 27 teams in the game. With Chicago Blackhawks announcer Pat Foley calling the action, the game's arcade style was as addicting, as fun as, uh, you know, NBA Jam. Players could get hot and score goals almost at will. I can't tell you how nervous you'd feel when no lead was safe, or the exhilaration when coming back because, you know, no lead was safe. It was a hell of a game and a hell of a great time playing with my New York Rangers in the local arcade. I'm betting not many of you know this game that I picked up at Electronics Boutique in 1992 for 20 bucks. But Hockey League Simulator 2 was the most rich and fulfilling hockey experience maybe ever, and it was in 1992. Fully customizable leagues that you could export into Wayne Gretzky Hockey 3 and actually play fantasy drafts, tradable players, renegotiations. Hell, you could fire your coach. Again, all of this was in 1992 from a DOS program. I had leagues with friends and custom teams, mine was called the Iceman, that had Steve Eisenman and Brian Leach on the same roster. This game had it all. It would receive a score of 92 out of 100 from Mika Nervi, who said, the wide selection of options and the ability to play Hockey League Simulator 2 with Wayne Gretzky Hockey 3 keeps it as king. The only problem with sports games is age. And with the NHL rapidly changing in the 90s, Hockey League Simulator 2 quickly became obsolete after the 1993 season. Beginning in 1991, NHL hockey began the EA NHL series, and it reigns as the undisputed champion of hockey video games. Within a few years, it reached perfection with NHL 94, one of the first console games to include a full season mode and player trades. Their PC versions would include franchise mode, downloadable rosters, and a mode where you can add your face to a created player. In later years, EA would add Be a Pro, where you can begin in an organization or get scouted and drafted into the NHL, GM mode, and the most divisive mode in the series, Hockey Ultimate Team. Hockey Ultimate Team is based in microtransactions that have driven away some hardcore fans of the game. As EA has gone down this road, their product has not improved much in years. Sad to say, for a series that has always pushed the boundaries to improve hockey in the virtual world. But, I can't help but put this series in any other spot than number one with their contributions they've made over the last 30 years. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.